just to let you know. Hi guys, uh, welcome uh, to another episode here, uh, another interview. Uh, we've got uh, Tassos from uh, RF Elements. You may have seen pictures of these, uh, as he says, bongos. <laughs> uh, but uh, what can you tell us about these bongos? Yeah, so this is our new ultra horn. This is our answer for the point-to-point -point market in 5 gig right now. So this technology again is based on scalar horn technology like our point-to-multi-point uh, -point, uh, point -point, uh, symmetrical horn antennas. Uh, we brought that same technology, obviously stretched it out, went massive, uh, and are able to deliver you point-to-point -point antennas that don't require shrouds, that don't need any shielding, and have zero side lobes at all. So a wonderfully performing uh, antenna product for point-to-point -point market, again, with our Twistport ecosystem. So any of the Ubiquiti, Microtech, or Cambian radio systems are now compatible with our ultra horn as well. Okay. And, uh, and I saw that you guys added a uh, twist port a couple months ago yep. with uh, connectors so you could put on a B5C or something like that. <laughs> no, no, no. I know everybody's asking for a connectorized twist port adapter, so we hear you. Uh, but at the moment, no, it's not, not available, so it would be nice, nice. But we did release now our Air Fiber 5X twist port adapter. So now you're able to use Air Fiber 5Xs with our ultra horns for point to point. And my understanding is they're gonna maybe release uh, multi-point uh, firmware for this. So you'd be able to use these with our symmetrical horn antennas as well for point to multi-point. So another new product coming out at uh, the end of the year. Yeah, and then uh, for viewers, uh, this is the uh, uh, GPS antenna port. Yeah, this is the GPS antenna port for GPS when it works. Uh, you would connect the GPS antenna down here, and that's pretty much it. So pretty simple. Again, same type of one-handed installation, twist and click, and uh, you're good to go. So uh, this is the largest model that we have right now. This is our 24 dB version, uh, and this smaller one is a 21 dB version. Um, if we look at the negative three beam angles, this is roughly about an 11, 11 degree beam, and this one's roughly about uh, 16 degrees at negative three. And, the front to back isolation of these antennas again is, is amazing, right? So front to back is over 40. Uh, you're gonna see 10 to 15, maybe even higher isolation for co-location. Uh, so your SNR, the, the 24 dB version will probably operate uh, and, and surpass like the traditional 29 or 30 dB parabolic dishes that you're using. So even though again, we have that low gain that everybody's worried about, the noise isolation is gonna overcome that blank budget issue. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, it's, wait for these guys to quit talking on the radio. There you go. Um, and uh, um, yeah, like, I've noticed that on, on your standard horns, or your, your older horns, you know, on the really wide one, there was a tiny little side blow, but once you got down to that 30, there was absolutely nothing. Yeah. And now you're down to 11. Yeah. Um, so you're not gonna hear a damn thing that's not in front of it. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's that's the concept, right? I mean, if you look at the parabolic antenna, right? It's a really, really old technology, right? And side lobes are huge uh, on those antennas. And people are using shrouds and stuff. And the shrouds help some because there are some kind of real vertical uh, side lobes that are on there and that helps. But there's two other extra side lobes that are on every parabolic antenna that are actually pretty flat. And they go straight through the shroud with the main beam and those things uh, are like 30 degrees, so you think you're getting a 10 or an 8 deb uh, degree beam angle, but it's really more like 30, right? So this is 11, done. That's it, you know? At, yeah. uh, and then I see that you have a, a new uh, like mounting system and brackets and let's, all that. Let's take a little view over here. So yeah, so we've, we've re-engineered our mounting system for our antennas, right? So it's a much more hardier mount. Uh, it's kind of self-aligning, so it slides in a lot easier. It doesn't bind like the original ones did a little bit. Uh, we've changed the, the screws on the top in order to be able to loosen and, and adjust the axis and rotation and, and you know, vertical and everything like that. So, so the mounts have been redesigned. Uh, we have, again, we've uh, redesigned the ergonomics of the handle. We even put a hole in there for you to put your carabiner on and help uh, pull it up the tower and stuff like that. So we, we really, you know, took a, a long look at, you know, how the antennas are installed and used and tried to, again, 
create some solutions that really work for the installer as well, not just fully focused on the RF performance, which is absolutely superb on these types of antennas. That, um, um, having that carabiner hook is great, especially if you don't have to detach it to hold onto it or yeah. detach it to actually plug it in. Mm -hmm. You can leave it connected the whole time yeah. so you can drop the damn dish and your lanyard just holds where it where it's supposed to be. Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, that's a nice handle too. Yeah, thanks. We've done the same thing, so we've, we've kind of relaunched our Ultra Dish. So this is our answer to the parabolic antenna form factor, right? So, so we've done some new shaping, new feed design. Uh, again, it's wideband now, right? So it's, you know, 5.1 to 5.9, so you get the whole spectrum. We've been able to suppress the side lobes slightly so you don't really need shrouds. So you're going to get really good RF performance, but there's only, again, so much we can do with an antenna technology that's over 10 years old, or even even older than that, I keep saying 10, a decade's a pretty long time, but a parabolic dish antenna uh, is basically has some inherent RF issues with it. So we've, we've done just about everything we can to give you the cleanest RF plot you're gonna get on the market. Oh well, sure, yeah, it's a, you know, it's, it's, you know, these are just different tools. Exactly. Some situations, yep. Yep. your parabolic's gonna work better for you. Some yep. situations, that's gonna work better for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, uh, you know, I can only imagine that you know these have a smaller wind load than those, so you know some tower owners may prefer them. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, likewise, you could be in areas where you're by yourself, and um, you know, you don't need as much to worry about that. You know, extra suppression of those. Yeah, if you're in a low so noise, little... noise environment, then yeah, maybe you don't need to make the investments, right? So, uh, and then again, so this this one is 24 dB, and this is 27 dB. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, so we give you some options in point to point, and again, twist port technology on all of them. So the ecosystem is still active for these, these as well. Sure. Yeah. And then uh, you know, in the shot you can see, you know, both, both families here, and uh, you know, you can really see how they visually compare, size comparison, and you know, uh, you know, you'll find the charts online for. Yeah, absolutely. If you go to our website, you can get all the data sheets, uh, wind loading, gain, frequency response, which is really important. So you'll see really good frequency response uh, and, and pricing. So everything is there. All right, well, it was nice talking awesome. to you again. Mike, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.